This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so we're on a grocery store here. This is kind of an old one. So what we've got is a freezer, it's not working. As you can see, we've got independent systems here. They got a old rack here. This one here, I've done like one job on it. Don't have a lot of time on it. This, uh, this thing's a little bit tired as they call it. So this is the one we're actually working on. The manager told me that it's been acting up for a few days now and uh, they've been coming back and turning off the breakers and hitting the reset here on the oil switch. I don't know if it's tripped yet or not. So far all I've done is I've came in and I've checked to make sure I have voltage up here and no voltage on my contactors. I do have voltage coming out of my defrost clock. We have one 60 minute section here uh, every 24 hours. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna find out what's going on, see if it's an issue with this oil safety. When you look at the uh, sight glass on here, this thing's just plumb filthy, nasty dirty. You can't see in there at all. So my thought is we probably got a screen down here on the bottom that's dirty. Also maybe a screen on the sensor that's dirty. And uh, this goes for the freezers. Let's go take a look at that right now. There's our heating systems. Looks like this got some air handlers with some wires running across the ceiling. Whatever works, I guess. So what we got here is a total of four little bunkers. These are all on that system. And there's a thermostat controlling all this, I guess, with this one little independent thing right here. Um, yeah, so all that stuff, all that stuff down, all that stuff down there all works. This here is completely dead. So I think our main issue, it sounds like when it's running, it's running, it works. There's supposed to be a thermostat in here somewhere, which, you know, thermostat or thermometer there definitely is not working. Uh, old Hussman cases. Uh, it's either 404 or 507. I'm not sure which one it is. And be nice to know if that thermostat's in here. We got wires dangling here, but I think it has something to do with the um, with the uh, lights. The door seals are not looking the greatest. They are what they are, I guess, right? That ain't our issue here, though. So that thermostat, I don't even know if it's still hooked up. That's an old writing possibly in there, but that's what we got. There's no. This is a dual temp case here on this one here. Um, how they're controlling temperature would be nice to know. But at this point, I think we just need to find out why it's shutting off. I think if the thermostat stuff was working before, it should be working still now. All right, let's go back in here and see what's going on. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this apart. Let's see if we got power to it. As you can see, we have no green light, none, no power to the module. Orange would be a self-check, red's low, green something. So we have no power to it. So right now it might be a low pressure cutout, which I thought they were supposed to have this powered all the time anyway, but let's get this thing apart and take a look in there.
use the bottom the L and M that is supposed to be closed. That's the second and third one up from the bottom one. I think the very bottom one is ground, I should say. Yeah, it's ground, so we need a second and third one up. Skip ground, skip alarm, and then there's L and M. When we measure across it, we have 212 volts. So the switch is open. Now, the very top one and the third one down is 240 volts. They've got the second one, third one down tied in with the fourth one down. So, one and the third one down, we should have 240 volts between these two right here. We have no voltage there, it's to zero. So it's not getting powered, therefore it's not opening up or whatever. So even if we hit power here, Yeah, they don't have this wired right. So when it's tripping, it's killing power to the control. That's a problem. Now we got 210 volts, so we need to make sure that power stays consistent. We've got issues here. We need to check the wiring on this, make sure that's wired right. So, loud environment, hit 90 dB. Around 30 minutes of this level can cause temporary hearing issues. Probably should wear hearing protection inside here. Real surprise. All right, you can see right here we're having issues with the pressure. It's saying there's pressure problems. We need to find out what the oil pressure differential is. We're gonna check our oil on the oil pump and we're gonna compare it to what it is on the suction side. That's gonna give us our differential. Usually it's about 45 PSI, something like that is what you'd want or better. All right, so we're on our suction side. We're gonna go ahead and open that up. See what our suction pressure is. Okay, we're running about a 48 PSI. Should use the same gauge, honestly. 48. discharge pump we got about 48 we have almost no pressure at all nothing so it's doing its job we're not sucking up oil so either our oil level's low because you can't see it or our screen's plugged up and it's not pulling the oil up into the sump so we've got an issue here and it finally tripped out there we go so we're going to need to isolate the compressor from the rack or from the refrigerant so what we're going to do is we're going to back up on it we're going to shut the suction suck the discharge pull the gas out of the compressor and then we're going to check that screen use that rag to help pop, catch some of that surprisingly no oil came out that's not a good sign one of the few that they actually had a straighter core depressor inside there. I don't know if I can see it or not. Anyhow, let's go ahead and bow this turkey off. Go ahead and hook the, uh, that back on there. Bring this thing all the way in. Obviously, we're going to get some pressure there again. And then when we get the pressure off of it or when we use it to get it out of there, that is, we'll know that, that it's actually down to zero. Otherwise, you're going to get blasted in the face with oil. That kind of sucks. This area around the cover and then I'm gonna get my little funnel out we're gonna drain some of this oil out oils probably really need replaced but we don't know I gotta check on some things to see if uh, we can get that 
set in place or if you have to reuse it or what. I mean, the right thing to be is it's dirty, change it. But in a perfect world, that's how it would be done, but unfortunately nothing's perfect. If we open that up, oil's gonna come out. I wanna clean the sight glass anyway. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pump that right into that container there. Usually these seals are reusable.
vibration switch, it's yellow and red. That also connects the low pressure switch over to that control over there on the head pressure and out of the head pressure comes back. Yeah, we're gonna put a manual reset on there, I think. So that's an orange, and orange comes over to here. So you got pressure control low, pressure control high, demand cooling module, which I don't think that's even in there. Oil fa failure control. Yep, it's something else. Okay, we went ahead and took the cover off the compressor contactor there. I want to make sure this fan, whether it runs or not, it spins, you know, freely. Took the terminals off the compressor except for one, which won't hurt nothing. Got it wired on there. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to push the contactor in one, see if that fan motor turns. So let's go ahead and turn that on. Fan is working, so it must not have been wired in right or something. Maybe it was on a high pressure switch. I don't know. Uh, it'll be wired on so that whenever the compressor runs, it runs. back off. It does work. That's good. For whatever reason it didn't come on. I don't know how they had it. They may have had it wired on with the head pressure switch here. It ain't gonna hurt for it to run all the time. Coming from right there. And like I said, it came in and tied in with the oil safety. So we'll probably reuse the oil safety with high and low switch. Uh, we're probably gonna put on a new dual switch for that. This one right here appears to be a fan cycle, which that box behind there is actually a fake wall. It goes to the outside wall so they can uh, slow the flow, stop the flow from the outside. Yeah. High event is low event minus low. So this thing kicked on about 150, 170 some pounds, kicked off 40 below it, which a little out of whack, but whatever. So the fan cycle, we could reuse that. And that's about it. So we'll get the dual pressure control, uh, get rid of that one on the back, wire in the, the, the oil safety. We're gonna go ahead and put all the caps back on this thing. And that way, if there is any leaking past the valves, we don't lose anything. Power off to it and kind of go from there and see if we can get it approved to replace it. Probably will need a little bit of help getting it over here. You can use a hijacker to lift it up, slide it over and on, crowbar to lift this part up, get it up onto the springs, kind of go from there with it. That's pretty much what we got right now. There's just not a lot more you can do about it uh, right now today. It's already been down for a few days, so. I don't know. It's been down for a while. It's a newer customer for us. So we get to them when we can. We gotta take care of the current customers first. Put that back in there like that. But that's uh, pretty much what we got going on, guys. I hope uh, you enjoy the video. It's one of those uncommon ones that you see. But you gotta see it. It was uh, worthwhile to check it see what you need to do and kind of go from there. Look how easy that is to see in there now. That is day and night difference. Yesterday I knew not what one was, today I is one. Snap this cover back on, we don't want to lose that. Hooks at the top. It locks in at the bottom.